Let's discuss neurology, embryology, the neural development. Now, before going ahead and reading this, let's give each other a refresher of how this all started. I know embryology is very annoying, but this is something that we need to do. Now, it all starts with the early embryonic development when a when an egg is fertilized by a sperm, right? And then what I need you to focus on, you don't need to know all this information, but let's have a refresher. It all starts when when we're having what is known as a bilaminar disc, which is made of an epiblast and a hypoblast, and that gives the primitive streak. And this is what I care about, is around day 16, we get three layers three layers. We have the outer layer, the ectoderm, the middle layer, mesoderm, and the inside layer, endoderm. So ectoderm, the way I remember ectoderm, there's a C in it, so that's like the cortex. And the way I remember mesoderm, the term meso always goes for middle, so that's the middle layer. And endo, the term endo is for inside, and so it's in the inside layer. So it's going to give all the inside structures. Now, Now, the way this happens is that we have our three layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. It's important for us to understand that the mesoderm or the middle layer is going to give a a structure known as the notochord, okay? So the mesoderm is going to give us a structure known as the notochord, while the ectoderm, which is the layer that was outside, is going to give us what is known as the neuroectoderm. The neuroectoderm is made of like an invagination known as a neural groove and around the neural groove is the neural crest. So again, mesoderm gave us our notochord while the ectoderm gave us our neuroectoderm which is composed of neural groove and neural crest. Then what's going to happen is that the invagination, what we call this neural groove, is now going to fold and give us a neural fold. Surprise! So the neural groove is going to fold, it's going to give us a neural fold, and around it we're going to have the neural crest still as it is, and then the the notochord is going to go away, it's actually going to give us a remnant in our uh, inner vertebral disc known as the nucleus pulposus. And then what's going to happen is that the neural fold that folded itself is going to give us the neural tube. So this is essentially a summary of what we're going to discuss right now. So let's read. They're telling you that the notochord, the notochord induces the ectoderm to form the neuroectoderm, the ectoderm to form the neuroectoderm. And this is going to give you your neural plate. So remember, the notochord, which came from the mesoderm, which is the middle layer right here. So notochord induced our ectoderm to give our neuroectoderm. And that's going to form what is known as the neural plate. And the notochord is then going to become what is known as a nucleus pulposus of the inner vertebral disc in adults. Okay, so it's a precursor to the nucleus pulposus of inner vertebral discs in adults. And if you look at a normal disc, normal human disc, you'll realize this is your spinal cord. And then there is a middle layer here known as a nucleus pulposus, and around it is the disc annulus. Now, the nucleus pulposus came from the notochord. So how is this uh, a pathology tie-in? Sometimes you would have a herniated disc. What's a herniated disc? Is when your nucleus pulposus is herniated throughout the disc annulus, which is this blue layer right here. So back to our uh, first aid. So the notochord is the precursor to nucleus pulposus of inner vertebral disc and induces the ectoderm to form the neuroectoderm, which eventually gives us the neural plate. And then the neural plate right here is then going to give us the neural tube and neural crest cells. So this is high yield to know that the neural plate eventually is the one that's going to give you the neural tube and the neural crest cells. Now, you should also note that the neural tube, what is neural tube? Neural tube is what's going to give you the CNS. And what is neural crest? Neural crest cells is what's going to give you the PNS. Along with the PNS, it's also going to give you the adrenal medulla. 
Then they tell you that the lateral walls of the neural tube, the lateral walls of the neural tube are divided into alar and basar, basal plates, into alar and basal plates. Alar plate means dorsal. What does dorsal mean in medicine? Dorsal means posterior, okay? So the alar plate is the posterior part, and so the basal plate obviously is going to be the anterior, ventral as an anterior. So you should also know, always note dorsal is posterior, ventral is anterior. So the alar plate is the dorsal part, while the basal plate is the ventral part. So alar plate or the dorsal part is sensory, okay? It is sensory and induced by what is known as BMPs or bone morphogenetic proteins. While the basal plate, while the basal plate is motor, and it is induced by sonic hedgehog. This is high yield. So it's high yield to know that the basal plate is induced by sonic hedgehog. Why is that? Because this is going to be a high yield tie-in when we talk about holoprosencephaly, which is a mutation in the sonic hedgehog. So just keep this in mind and remember this is high yield. Last thing, they say that the home box genes or the HOX genes regulate the neural tube segmentation, the neural tube segmentation and the cranial caudal differentiation. So any mutations that you, or you're going to have is going to lead to syndactyly and hypospadia. What is syndactyly? Syndactyly is a condition where you have two fingers joined together, okay? And there's different types of syndactyly, but you're having two fingers joined together. And what is hypospadia? Hypospadia is when your normal urethral opening is not in its usual position, so it could be anywhere in there. So home box genes regulate neural tube segmentation and cranial caudal differentiation, and any mutation could lead to things like syndactyly which is double limbs technically, two hands joined together in hypospadia, which is the urethra being in the wrong place. So to conclude, to conclude, you need to know that the process of getting a neural tube or the process of neural tube formation all starts with your notochord, which comes from the mesoderm. It induces the ectoderm which is the outer layer to differentiate into the neuroectoderm so you had your surface ectoderm surface ectoderm was induced by the notochord to differentiate into the neuroectoderm and the neuroectoderm is going to form the neural plate and then later the neural groove is going to give you the fold and then the neural fold you're also going to have a neural crest and then the neural fold is going to become your neural tube and here you have your neural crest Neur neural tube is then going to give you the cns which is the uh, brain the neural crest is going to give you the pns so things like the dorsal root ganglia your autonomic ganglia your pns glial cells like schwann cells or satellite cells or even your adrenal medulla other than the pns it gives the adrenal medulla and last thing you should also know that the mesoderm is going to give you your microglia which is the scavenger cells of the cns